Greetings, dear ones. I'm Cryon of Magnetic Service. Again, it is the first channel of the day. In front of many who have never seen this before, never experienced the energy before. And like so many other times, I say that human beings come in with a bias of life. And they may be very, very spiritual and have opened up to the possibilities of God inside. They may be searching for who they really truly are in a spiritual sense. But all of you come in and sit down with the bias of life. Life as a human being is extremely three-dimensional. Even if you are highly spiritual and working with multidimensional things, you've got to want to go there on purpose and practice them. The evolvement of humanity will feature this ratio between the bias of three dimensions and the ability and the understanding of using that which you have of intuition and more which puts you squarely into that which is beyond three dimensions. Scientifically it is understood, it is recognized, it is seen, it is studied. It is not that far out as you would think. However you come and sit today with the bias of life. And the bias of life would say this, when you see something like this, it has to be a trick. Because you don't see this every day. Or you were taught it's not possible. Or you had to go beyond what you were taught. Reject what you were taught. To even sit in the chairs. And you still carry the bias. Is it possible right now? That you're looking at something just a little bit quantum. That you're looking at something that is yours in the future and yours now if you would accept it. That the man has crossed the veil. That he steps aside. And that using his voice and his intellect, his intelligence and his language, you are hearing literally the consciousness of an angelic principle, I want to say. A principle, not an entity. That you are hearing what is on the other side, the consciousness of what is there. And the first thing that you might recognize is there is no judgment and there is no criticism. There is only a hand extended. Saying welcome. Welcome to a paradigm you were never told about. That the spark of life in you is the spark of the creator. You wouldn't be here without it. You're designed. Your soul is part of the universe. It is part of that which is a creative source. It's part of God. Surrounding it is the biology on purpose of a human. You are here on purpose. You are magnificent in all that you are. You are forever. You always were and always will be. And for a temporary time, your name goes here. Your name may be Sal or Ruth or George. And it'll be that well for a while, for a while. And then it'll change to something else. But it'll still be the same soul. And you come and you go and you come and you go and you come and you go and you come and you go. And that is by design as well. It's a beautiful system. It builds wisdom and all souls. That is who sits in front of me and many of whom are listening now. Are you starting to feel it yet? Have you dropped the barrier just a little bit of this can't be so? But those listening perhaps for the first time and not here, are you beginning to feel the fact that we know you're listening? That this is a beautiful system that goes beyond the, the singleness of humanity. It's, a, it's an omnipresent 
past, present, and future omnipresent. Beautiful system of God who even knows now who's going to listen in the future because the potential is there that you will. And now that you are, dear one, who's listening to this, let's talk. For all of you, what brings you here? And this is the beautiful part. You came here with free choice. Nobody has told you that you had to listen. Because if you didn't, something bad would happen. You came because you were attracted to something. And what is this that attracts you? And I'll tell you what attracts you is the inner self of who you are. You're looking for a friend. And that friend is on the other side of the veil called God, spirit. It's not a prophet. It's not anything that's ever been alive on this planet. It's the essence of you. And it's God. And it's so attractive to you. You know it's there. You know it's inside. That some spend their lifetimes trying to find what it is. There is an energy upon you that is remarkable, new, and the first time on the planet which starts to churn through the darkness, eliminating it, squashing it, creating space for evolvement, beauty, compassion, understanding, and awareness like never before. And all it does is clear the area so that you can see clearly. It does not put upon you any other bias. It's a clearing of the old so that you can see who you are. Imagine slogging down a street filled with things you had to move out of the way or would, would oppose you and keep you even from sleeping at night until you got up and slogged some more. That's the old energy and the old soul. Like lights being buried by dirt or in the bushes, you did your best to walk through a life that was not commensurate with you, your divine self. And suddenly, it starts to change. And seemingly by itself, the street starts to clear. And you start seeing that which you never saw before. You see that divinity everywhere. You see it in other human beings. You see it in plants and flowers and sky. It's almost like everything started to be wiped away that was dark and all you got to see was the color and the light. And you stood taller and walked faster. But suddenly you saw your goal. You saw who to walk toward, what to walk toward, what to do better than you did before because you didn't slog anymore. It wasn't covered by tar and dirt and old things that stink. Instead, you see the beauty. And I'll tell you what, what you don't know and what you didn't realize is this is not a gift from God. You did this. You did this. And the ancients predicted that you would do this. And this is the reason for cryon, that I would illuminate this that you have done and tell you what it means, what you can do, where you can go, and the pitfalls it may come with moving from the old to the new. But make no mistake, this is something that belongs to you. Collectively, old souls, you have been at the forefront of all of this. The more lifetimes you've had, the more you're responsible for the clearing. This is what you've waited for. There'll be more coming, of course. More instructions, of course. But if you really want to know what you see in the clearing that is so profound, it's the love that is here for you. You can feel it. You can see it. 
You're known by God. Your name is known by God. All that you've come here for, listener, and the ones who are here live, all that you are is known. And because of that, every single issue is solvable. You are not alone anymore. This is the message of Cryon and others because this is the new energy. Everything and everyone is involved in this which is the greatest shift that humanity has ever started. And I emphasize yet again, started. For that is where you are. In the scheme of things, dear ones, consciousness is not something that shifts instantly. It will happen in different forms, in different ways, in different cultures, and it takes different times. As you sit there or as you listen to this, for your culture, you may already be experiencing this very thing, and in others, they may not experience it for a generation. One becomes a catalyst for the other. And typically, there will be those on the planet who will receive things to help others. The shift is real. There are still those listening who wonder. I'd like to tell you about it. I'm going to label this particular message surprises in the new energy. We're going to start by saying there are those who inexplicably have just awakened. Those who would listen to these channels which have been posted since 2005 and find them new. For the first time, without a book, stumble upon this message and be listening now. So I'll say to you, dear one, welcome. It's not an accident that your ears hear this, a message for you. Why would you suddenly be interested in these things now? It's almost like there is an acceleration program for some people. Ones who would never ever be listening to something like this are now doing so willingly without anyone around. Is there something here? And there is. Dear one, if you're one of those who is just awakening now in so many ways, we tell you that this is what the energy creates. It literally affects that which is your akash. You start to awaken into purpose that you never thought you had before. Things start occurring to you, beautiful things. Is there more? Is there a lot more? Is there a system that I have missed? What is being said about it? Who is talking? And then there is that integrity that starts to tell you what you're hearing is right or wrong. Is the messenger trying to sell you something? Is the messenger trying to get you to do something? This messenger of Cryon is trying to tell you that you are loved beyond what you think you are from a creative source that you have called God. The earth knows about this source, the singular God, the oneness of God, but they don't know that there is a beauty of benevolence that exists that knows your name. That's the message. And that something grand has happened on the planet something that was predicted by the ancients, not by the currents, not by your scripture, but by the ancients. That is what is taking place. Things that you will find in the ancient calendars 
and the writings on the walls in the lips of the elders who remember what they were taught a time of great decision a time of great light and dark a time of no fence sitting a time of truth a time of awareness and awakening and every single human will have a choice to accept it to see it or to simply walk the way they've been walking but the ones who will see it first the ones who will listen to this message and wonder why they are are the ones that have been on this planet for eons that is the old soul your soul is journeying through life the soul is eternal it never dies it comes and goes and comes and goes in different kinds of situations cultures bodies genders and learns things as it goes this is the time you planned for old soul whether you know it or not there may be mystery right now to you what is this what is really being said and so for you we say take it slowly listen carefully and perceive truth but the ancients knew that human consciousness would someday awaken to a higher much higher ethics the beginning would be with those who were old souls who had been on the planet the longest and would have the equipment that is the experience to see what it was it's a fast track of learning helped along by the things that we have channeled are happening that the earth itself and all that is upon it knows who you are and what is going on and that there are processes at work that will make this an awakening far far easier because the processes are one that will void the dark make it uncomfortable for those who only want the darkness in their lives and will eventually wipe away that which you even would consider to be evil this is where you are the beginning is where you are the second kind of person is the one I want to address now who is the old soul who knows this who has been listening for years who expected it and now is having trouble with it trouble in the new age we can say and the reasons have been covered over and over but I want to give some advice a few pointers you may not have heard before a review and then some new things first I want to take a moment 28 years ago the ball was rolling toward this I came in in 1989 the political changes on the planet were vast it was starting then to change the future my partner was not necessarily receptive and it took years to the place where he could write that was even understandable at that point in time you might say well Cryan did you think you would ever be talking about the shift would it take place I had seen this before I knew there would be those who would not accept it but I want to tell you how I feel there is emotion on the other side of the veil it is compassion it is love it is celebration it's pure it is absolutely pure there are those who have sat in the ecstasy of God for eons they've talked about it you see them they're painted their eyes are cast upwards and they have God inside there's light around them that's how I feel to sit here have you have you been 
past that marker and on your way to something grand knowing in advance that there will be doubt in the future because you will see two steps forward and one back and yet there's no stopping the ball from rolling toward an accelerated graduate earth of high consciousness at a pace that will be at your own decision and your own level but it will go faster dear ones dear old soul if you'll listen to me now some of you have been in this you call metaphysics most of your life that's who I want to address the one who is just awakening who was not in this won't have the issues you have none of them everything will be new they will have decisions to make they will not have to unlearn anything that they learned and you will and the hardest thing is the bias that you carry over it tells you you know how to connect to God we have talked about this before we've given you metaphors before but we really haven't discussed it in this terminology what are you gonna do when you lose it healer are you listening reader are you listening the connection is that what you felt in the past you know you're connected you can feel it again I go with the paintings the shaft of light comes down and your eyes are cast up it's like you're looking into the eyes of an angel you feel it your whole cellular structure radiates and vibrates I'm connected and that's when the epiphanies come and the beautiful dreams uh, the writings the prophecies uh, the joy and along comes 2012 and you sit there with your eyes cast up and there's no light and there's no thing no thing that would ever give you an indication you were connected at all no thing and we've discussed this before and you say it's been shut off and it hasn't been it's simply moved but the bias you carry is that this is what I've always done it's coming back things will settle it's coming back no it isn't dear ones it moved on it moved to a higher frequency it moved to a higher level it moved to a higher light source it moved a little bit over there not too far it's just over there and yet the bias of the human being says God is the same today yesterday forever therefore God is going to be the same and the truth is this you're right but again we say it's human beings that change the relationship to God therefore move over because you are expected to vibrate higher to feel that which says you can get into the light the old place you sat is that which is now old it's not commensurate with your magnificence get up move over get in the light the frequency you might say you might describe of the connection has moved you might say it's higher I say it's different you've had what I would call a very identifiable three-dimensional frequency you tune into and feel the ecstasy of God suddenly there's layers suddenly there's multi-dimensionality suddenly it's in color instead of just one yellow the light now resonates so differently and you're still sitting in that same place literally in the dark because you don't want to move there are those who say all right all right crying I understand 
How do I do it? Let me ask you this. How did you do the first one? Did you jump through hoops? Did you climb ladders or steps? Did you have to have lessons? And the answer is no. You just sat there. And you went into a space that said, Dear Spirit, I'm here. Let's talk. You gave the invitation. And over a period of time, this is what took place. Then the connection got more often. If you're a meditator, you know. You get into a certain space, literally, where you float. Everything is there. It clicks into place. Let me ask you, what do you have to do to get there? The answer is just expect it. That's the answer. Number one, we'll say it again. Understand it moved. Understand that you did nothing wrong. And that this new energy is uncomfortable for some of you because you're just not getting that. You're still sitting in a place expecting the same thing to happen. It got bigger. So did you. You just not matched up yet. So how do you do it? You do the same thing you always did. First of all, change your position. Don't even consider that it's still where you were. Go to another place. Perhaps even change the chair. Do anything you can that tells your innate, I'm getting ready for something different. Then when you sit there, you can do the same thing you did before. Dear Spirit, I am here in my magnificence. I've got inside. I'm ready for the connection. And over time, dear ones, he'll come to you. It's almost like you're matching light sources. But as long as you expect your light to be somewhere else, it's not going to happen. That's the first step. Second step, if you want to call it even a step at all, is don't decide in advance what it's going to feel like. You think you know, don't you? I've connected for 50 years, you might say, or 30 or 20 or 10 with spirit. I'm a healer. I know what it feels like to be connected. No, you don't. You know what it feels like to be marginally connected. You have no idea about being connected. And that is the offer. Don't decide in advance what you're looking for. Instead, you stand in this purified light that you can't see and you haven't really experienced yet. And you say, dear spirit, I'm here. Match my light to yours. And then don't expect something that you've had before. It's not going to overwhelm you with emotion, dear ones. Maybe the first one did. Now it's going to overwhelm you with truth and wisdom and appropriateness like a key in a lock. There you are. And you're going to say, this is good. You'll feel it in your heart, not in an overwhelming emotional way, but in a way that says, I am connected. Hard to describe the difference between euphoria and being connected. One is an emotion. It's actually pretty much one way. But the key in the lock the real connectivity is a two-way street. You are being given answers. You're being given wisdom. All of these things. I want to talk to some of you. I know who's listening to this. This is not for this audience necessarily. I know who's listening. I want to talk to the senior who's given up. Now you know I've identified you, don't you? It's too much trouble, you'll say. I'm a creature of old habits. 
I've been doing this a certain way for so long, I'm not really sure that I can change. And even as you say that, and your body hears that, there is an enormous entourage dressed in formal attire, waiting for the party for you to find the energy that's just a step away. You have so much help. If you'd simply acknowledge, I'm going to continue, and it's going to be better than it ever was. There are those of you who have stepped away and told your psyche and your innate that you are frightened and worried because you can't find it again. Did you know this is an invitation for disease in your body? Because if you're not going to stand in the light, dear ones, why even exist? You might even sign your life away. You spent so much time invested in the light, you can't just cross this bridge and give up. That's an invitation for an unbalance. You know better. You know better. We're all there dressed in formal, formal attire. We're waiting for the light to be turned on for you to arrive and reconnect in a way you never have before and keep it going. That's for the elder who gives up. Being uncomfortable in this new energy is so common for old souls. Because now you've got to drop the baggage. That's the other one. What is it that you've carried around that you think you need? The protection, the clearing, whatever it is we've told you before. This is new. You can't, ca you can't carry around your, your lamp oil when you have electricity. And some of you are. It's dangerous. It catches on fire. <laughs> Do you get it? It's dangerous to carry the old baggage into the new energy. Because you'll always use it as a crutch. You expect it's going to do this or that when it does nothing. Your light in this new energy is so immense. You don't need electricity or lamp oil. All you need is you. And an understanding. Finally, you're connected in a way, in a way you've had dreams about. Haven't you had the dreams where you're connected? Haven't you had them stand where you have shafts of light coming through you? Now you know I'm talking to you, don't you? I know who's here. Shafts of light. And you wake up from the dream. You say, wouldn't that be nice? It is nice. Welcome to the new energy. Because that's you. That was a foreteller of you in this energy. The light is esoteric. You can't measure it. Not really. Not yet. But the ones who can feel it are the ones that would oppose you. Because no longer is there opposition not to that kind of light. They'll run from you. You've got wisdom, power. The power of truth and knowledge. Knowledge that will create a civilization eventually that will never war with itself. This is who you are. If you get connected, your health will start to correct itself. Balance is what happens when connectivity takes place. I want to tell you something. Everyone here needs to hear that. If you get connected, the innate in your body will start to clean up that which is biological. It's about that which cleans the body with compassion, understanding, and truth. When your stress levels disappear so they can't be measured anymore, where disease flows away from you instead of into you, when you can safely walk in dark places and not be afraid because you carry your own light. 
when the fear of that which would unbalance you goes away because you know it's not yours anymore. It doesn't belong to you anymore. There are those in the room who have actually accepted disease to the point where you say, I have this. Have you ever thought about what your body hears when you say, I have this, and you name something? You've just owned it, acknowledged it, and your body heard you. That is dangerous. Old soul, watch what you say. I have magnificence. I have light. I'm working the puzzle to eliminate this. I am in the process of clearing this. Never say, I have this, and then name a disease, or an issue, or a problem. Because your innate is so aware right now of your commands to it. It's almost like it's listening to every single word you say to everyone. It's time for you to claim that magnificence. It's going to help you to connect. Believe me, you're beginning to turn on your light. It's the beginning. It's why I'm here. The transition is tough. Only because the bias is caused from eons of being a certain way. And now it is not. That's the message today. Oh, there's more. Much more. The oil, the catalyst, the thing that greases the wheels of all of this is a word you don't want to hear. Patience. All of you are impatient. Every single one. Because at some level you can feel it coming. The train is arriving. You got the ticket. You've been waiting years. You can hear it, but it's not here yet. So now you wring your hands and say, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I want you to be patient because it's a guarantee you're going to get on the train. Some of what I'm going to say to you, dear ones, sitting in the chairs in front of me is, it's going to be appropriate also for those listening. But this is mainly for this group. There's a truth here, a beautiful one, one that's hard to, to imagine and to cognize. That God is real. That the creative source of the universe, immense as it is, is part of you. That's the plan. That's how you're wired. This is also part of the creation story. The angelic presence, if you want to call it that. It has given you the, the seed biology. The creative story is that you were given on purpose the knowledge of light and dark. And with free choice, you can choose the divine or not. It is a beautiful story that encompasses a plan. And the plan has you discovering who you are. God is real and available. And in this new energy, more than available. Perhaps even standing and waiting. What makes this so unbelievable? To most of those who are humans, anywhere on this planet is that it's almost an oxymoron. You believe that you are so small. How could a God care? The one who 
who set the stars in motion. How could a God care? And yet that which is your consciousness sometime expands as big as God. And you know this, that the body that you are in, small as it might be, has a piece of the Creator and a consciousness potential that is immense. That's the oxymoron. So at some level, you know I'm right. Also, at some level, you know that your soul keeps going when the body is finished. Those two things add up to a partial belief. But the message for those in front of me are this. Messages, really, are this. That each one of you is on a separate individual path and many of you are struggling with a basic concept not that God is real or not but the concept is can you apply any of this today really to yourself can you change your situation I know who's here. And your situation could be that of that is what is occurring around you or what is happening in your life or what is happening in the cells of your body. And like so many others, the tradition, the biases, what you were told, all conspire against you. And you feel just a little apart from that which has been presented for two days. Some of you have actually crawled into your shell. I know who's here. And although you have listened and heard everything, it really hasn't gotten very far. Some of you have made up your mind that what you've heard here is for someone else in the chair, not you. It didn't seem to ring true. It didn't seem to apply. And that's because the shell that you've built around yourself is a very tough one. And the shell is of your own making, of course. You deciding in advance that you can't do it. Some of you come because you're looking for that which would penetrate the shell. And maybe at this point in time, you said, well, maybe this wasn't it. Others of you, you had the information given this weekend. You saw the profundities, the beauty, perhaps even felt the compassion. And yet when you leave this place, you can't really call it your own you can't own it not yet you see I know who's here what gets in the way is what always gets in the way the past the lack of self-worth what you were taught what you think you know I want to take you on a journey and you've got to agree to fantasize with me. This is not going to work. It's not going to harm anyone here. I want you to visualize things with me and I want you to feel these things with me. 
That's why you came. You came for change. You came for knowledge. You came for wisdom. Perhaps an awareness, an awakening, anything. You've invested in yourself. So why not do this final exercise in this workshop day? It's a fantasy. It's a metaphor. Some would even say it's cute. But it's as real as it gets. I want to introduce you to something. The fantasy has you with your own consciousness in a vision state. Some would say a dream. I say a vision. For the word vision is going to give you permission for anything to happen. Visions, unlike dreams, are remembered and feel real at the time. I invite you to step aside of yourself for just a moment. If you can, if you wish to, even if you can't, understand, acknowledge, cognize that God is here. That this message is from the other side of the veil and knows your name. And invites you to participate right now. Come with me in this vision. Step out of that which is your condition, your situation. Just for a moment, if you can. Leave your worries at the door. Just for a moment. Won't take long. What would you envision if you were standing into a room that was completely and totally blank and white. There was nothing there. And something is going to appear, and it's going to be for you. There's a door. And the door has a label on it. And the door has the label that says, Mysteries of the Body. If you were making a movie, music goes here. <laughs> the door has that label because it has to be just a little, what you say, interesting and yet untouchable to some. For that is something you may not want to know. What mysteries? lie beyond the door. That's the door you're going to open. We're going to open it together. And you realize in this blank room the body that they are speaking of in the sign is you. It's not about the human body. It's your name goes here, body. You're about ready to open the door of the mysteries. Now, why should you have to open a door at all? And this is one of the metaphors. There is literally a wall between you and your cells. When you look down at your body, you don't tend to greet it. You even call it by its part. You say, my leg hurts instead of I hurt. My toe hurts instead of I hurt. The pieces and the parts of your body, you're not in contact with them. There's a wall between you. That's part of what the workshop is about. How to get through the wall. Well, you're about ready to go. Because this door has been created for you right now, today, in this exercise. I want you to open it with me. No fear, no anxiety. You'll see why in a moment. You open the door and you see that it's a bit stubborn. You have to pull a little. 
Because that wall between you and your cellular structure is a tough one. Finally, the door comes open, wide open. And you start hearing that which perhaps is the sounds of the body. You're not really familiar with those sounds. One of the biggest features always is your heart. You hear that first and then there's more. There's the sound of running fluids, even perhaps the snap of the synapse and the electricity. All of that. It's a little, it's a little strange. You're not ready to enter just yet. Then you realize this is just you, so why not? You walk over the threshold of this door and suddenly you're in another world. As you look forward in this metaphor, you realize you're in some kind of, for a better word, control room. You can see that which is the control of specific things in your body. You recognize it somehow. There's the heart, the brain. There's the pineal. And a few other things. You don't see the control over specific systems like you thought you might. But still, it is a control room. And then you realize something, that you're not alone. That in this control room, there's just a myriad of small entities. And you're starting to realize that they're your DNA. And then you start to see they have names on them, little badges. <laughs> and every badge has the same name, you. You've stepped into the control room of everything in your body. You start to realize that there are an enormous number of these little entities. You're not afraid of them. They haven't noticed you yet. These little badges are all over them. On their backs, on their fronts, they've got your name. Your name is on all of them. All working together the best they can, and then something happens. Something amazing happens. Everything falls silent for a moment. You hear what you might recognize and perceive as a gasp when they all realize you've entered the room. Then they turn and show themselves to you. You see that they're shocked. They're amazed. You see just for a moment, they are stunned. And then there's this big smile on every single one of them when they realize that the celebrity in the room is you. Suddenly they start towards you and they crowd around you. You can feel them, millions of them, just touching you. So happy that you've actually entered the room. Others come in. This may seem odd. You, you hear, you feel the flash bulbs going off. Look who's here. Look who's here. He couldn't be so. The boss has arrived. They are so enamored that they get to meet you. When in human history, in the past, you never visited the room, ever, ever. And the wall was simply there, and they guessed the whole time who you were. And then they back off. The language of the cells you don't understand. They don't speak English. They don't speak French. They don't speak Portuguese. <laughs> 
They don't speak Spanish. They don't speak anything but cell language. And you can tell that they want to say something. They have their, their hands, if you can imagine, hands on DNA. <laughs> they have their hands outstretched. Like, like they're asking a question. And then you realize that collectively they're sending a message to you. One question. What can we do for you? <laughs> From their standpoint, it's been eons since the actual God consciousness of who they serve has walked into a room. And they've never really had the communication. They've had signals, partial messages. And they never met the boss. And in this moment, before the door closes, they want to know, what can we do for you? What do you want? What is it that we can do? The vision is over. Because the question is only answerable by each individual hearing this message. This is real. For in this new energy, your consciousness is beginning to break the barrier and talk to the cells directly. They're starting to hear what your ears hear. They're starting to get the messages by the way you behave. Did you ever know they consider you a celebrity? Did you ever know of the frustration of the DNA that all they hear are muffled sounds until now? What is it you're going to tell them? If you could ask for one thing, perhaps in your situation it would be peace. Cellular peace over what is going on in your body or around you. Or perhaps you would ask for a confluence of health, balance, chemistry. What about love? Compassion. What is it that you could give them that they could go to work on right now to create what you came for? Communication would be a good one. <laughs> This is the vision that I want you to grasp and hold and leave here with. Because it's true. I don't care how unworthy you feel. There is an entourage called you that has been waiting so long for you to talk to it. Besides all the divine and the esoteric things that you've learned, there is a body entourage what would you say to your pineal, which talks to your higher self? That's the control room you walked into. It's the soul. It's the body. It's the innate. It's the heart and the brain. It's the triad that controls all that is that is you. And you stand right in the middle of it. And you're a celebrity. Did you feel for a moment in the vision the love the body had for you? The shock and the surprise and the delight of being able to touch you. Look upon your face. All of them with your name. It is time, dear ones, to make the vision real. And know that nothing that has ever happened to you is going to keep you from marrying to those cells, to talking to those cells. You are worthy. You're a celebrity. Don't let anybody or anything or any situation talk you out of the truth of this. Feel it in your very soul as you sit there. You 
are worthy of this. So let's get going. Void the things that keep you from your own magnificence. That's the message, as it always is. Feel it. Know it. Embrace this new group of friends. The flashbulbs are still going off. And so it is.